Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the session. Um, we're running a few minutes behind as we um, give our guest speaker uh, a chance to wrap up his clinic with a patient. So we always know patients come first. And so uh, we will begin in a couple of minutes. Just a reminder to let everyone know that um, we are um, we are streaming live via Facebook, and we will also make this available, the video available for replay via our YouTube channel as well. Our topic today is treatment options for sickle cell disease, why Indari cannot be overlooked. We are extremely excited to have our guest speaker, Dr. Corey Abair, and we will begin shortly. Hello. Hello, Dr. Corey. All right, just to let you know, we have three attendees um, okay. and we are already live and we okay. are recording. Um, I, I have promoted you to panelists, so you are now able to also uh, share your screen in just a moment once we okay. introduce you. All right. So I'm going to get ready to begin here. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. All right. Welcome, everyone. You are watching us either live via the webinar or you're watching us live, Facebook Live. Either way, we are so excited that you are here for another session of Living Sickle Smart with Sickle Cell Foundation of Minnesota. I'm going to share my screen because there's a couple of housekeeping things that we want to um, really begin our show with today. And then we will move on with our special um, guest speaker, Dr. Corey Abair. We are so excited. He's going to talk to us about Indari, why, why Indari cannot be overlooked as a treatment option for sickle cell. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and share my screen for a couple of things that I want to run through. All right. So first and foremost, yes, you are here at the 2021 Living Sickle Smart. We are wrapping up our uh, October sessions. We want to give a special thanks to our sponsors and partners, Be The Match, Bluebird Bio, and Novartis, um, as well as Emmaus Life Sciences today as our guest speaker. We want to also make sure that we um, encourage everyone who is a warrior to, to go to sicklecellconnect.com, order your free sickle cell warrior resource pack um, package, order one for yourself, or if you are a, a provider, a medical provider, make sure that you share this resource with your patients. Um, it's a wonderful resource and it's a way to also increase our, our knowledge um, of what's happening around gene therapy and other um, uh, bone marrow and stem cell therapies. As and a reminder that because we know that uh, these therapy options, many uh, do need a donor, we really want to do our part to increase the red number of, of potential um, stem cell or bone marrow donors on the registry. You can learn more by going to bethematch.org. Um, it's amazing when you really understand this science that we truly are the cure. The people who are most closely um, genetically and ethnically related to the person who is needing uh, a transplant, those are the ones, those are the donors that they need. So I encourage everyone, if nothing more, please go to learn more to see how you could be a lifesaver. And then of course, we are seeing unprecedented lows and 
and donated blood. Uh, blood donations, transfusions are an integral part of treatments for individuals living with sickle cell disease. So we encourage each and every person, no matter who you are, um, to donate blood. Here in Minnesota, um, uh, the, the, our two top providers of blood are American Red Cross and Memorial Blood Centers. We work with um, and partner with both organizations uh, and, and we wanna do our part to help to increase the blood uh, supply that's on the shelves so that when um, our patients, our loved ones, um, ourselves, even when we need blood available, that it's there for us. And then I really do want to take a moment out today because um, yesterday we learned of the passing of Hertz Nazaire. Um, and Hertz was a friend to us all. He was a friend of the community. He was um, Haitian in his ethnic origin. He was an artist. As I said, he's a friend. He's a creative soul, a warrior advocate, and an absolutely a sickle cell survivor. So we really want to make sure that we um, give a shout out and we recognize the uh, an incredible gift that he was to all of us. Um, many of us recognize that photo in the middle, 10 redefined. That was one of Hertz's um, uh, uh, most incredible contributions uh, to the sickle cell community. Um, it says so much. All of the other pieces of art, uh, including down at the lower left corner, the Finding Your Colors, um, an adult coloring book that he, he created a couple of years ago that is incredible. It's beautiful. I have um, so many of these pieces in my own home. And then also, if you are looking to hear from him, there's a couple of different ways. Look him up on, on YouTube and you'll see that um, Cheat Codes, which uh, he was on uh, episode 24, as he talked about painting away the pain. I put the um, link up there and though we're not going to go to it, what we are gonna go to is this particular link. Um, what, something that he worked on that was so incredible, the Waiting Chair Project. So we are going Going to get pull that up. It's only about, it's about 60 seconds, and we want to share that with you now. So give us just a uh, just a moment, and we're going to share that video. Thank you for your patience. All right, Dr. Corey, can you see the video? Yes, I think I can. Yep. Okay, excellent. I'm gonna start it now that I've confirmed you all can see it. Hello, my name is Hertz Nazir. I'm a painter, artist, and designer. I was born with sickle cell anemia, which later affected my vision. I continued. Oh. Uh oh, it looks like we might be having a little bit of a problem here. One moment. Continue to use my art to advocate for my community. Oh. It's loading. Okay, we may have to come back to it towards the end. My name is Hudson. All right, we'll come back to it at the end. 
as we move things forward. This is the lovely piece of doing things live. Sometimes things happen. So thank you everyone for bearing with us. It's, it, it always happens. We're, we're used to this in the COVID uh, space now. That's right. <laughs> it's That's always right. something. All right. So once again, um, it's in loving memory of Mr. Hertz Nazaire. Um, it really truly is a loss to our community. We'll try to get the video up and running again, but just reminder I continue that to use my art the waiting chair to advocate for my and you can go to YouTube and look that up as well. Um yeah. There we go. All right, so today's session, as I mentioned earlier, treatment options in sickle cell disease, why Indari cannot be overlooked. Just a reminder that to view previous or future sessions of our Living Sickle Smart virtual education series, you can do so through our website at sicklecellmn.org. You can do so um, through our YouTube channel. And frankly, our website's gonna point you back to our YouTube channel as we are trying to gain viewership and subscribers. Um, and then I suggest that you um, kind of, uh, you can subscribe to our Eventbrite channel as well. Eventbrite is when, whenever we have events or um, including webinars that we will post it there uh, and you can be informed as, as we post new events. If you're on any of the sites, whether you're on a, a social media platform, you're on YouTube, Eventbrite, LinkedIn, search for us under Sickle Cell MN or Sickle Cell MN um, or Sickle Cell Foundation of Minnesota. And then last but not least, just a reminder that um, throughout the, the, the remainder of the year, we will continue our Living Sickle Smart sessions. In September, we focused on sickle cell disease, a public health emergency. Throughout October, we focused on disease modifying treatments and curative therapies. Um, and we also uh, spoke with individuals from Be The Match, American Red Cross, um, we spoke with individuals from Agios, and now we're hearing from Emmaus. So it's been a power packed month. November, we will be talking about um, planning for your future and navigating life transitions. And in December, we're talking about smiling through the pain, how pain can impact mental and emotional health. We're very excited about all of our previous and upcoming sessions, and we hope that you'll continue to join us. Um, we also had sessions this month um, related to race, racism, and implicit bias. What can we do about it? The, you'll find that on our YouTube channel. Um, as I said, the diversifying the blood donor pool, we spoke with the Red Cross and Dr. David Mayer. And then um, earlier this week, we uh, had a session on curative therapy options in sickle cell disease, fixing the bin with Dr. Ashish Gupta. So we're very, very excited um, to move into today's program. And I'm going to make sure that we stop sharing now so that I can introduce you to our special guest. And I am so excited. Let me just read you guys his bio. Like that was, was just part of what made me so excited. So Dr. Abair is a practicing physician and the director of medical research and development at Emmaus Life Sciences. In addition, Dr. Abair is a journalist an educator practicing in New Orleans, Louisiana, and he is also the chief medical editor and correspondent for Black News Channel, the BNC, and the chief executive officer of Community Health TV and College Health TV. How exciting is that? We are so excited to have him here on our Living Sickle Smart show, and we are sharing his knowledge with you. He is sharing his knowledge with us, and he has um, an exciting book to tell you about as well. So without further ado, Dr. Aber, I'm going to um, hand it over to you. Make sure you can uh, share your screens. Okay. 
All right, you no go worries. right ahead. All right, well, I'm going to do that. And I just want to thank you for that awesome intro. Um, this is um, really how uh, my life is 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 shaping up now. I mean, I um, I've, I just got published in the um, the Clinical Journal of Infectious Diseases yesterday, the New England Journal of Medicine a couple of weeks ago, and all of that is cool because I've done so much work in COVID nineteen, but none of it is even close to what I'm dealing with as far as my responsibility that I have on my back now for the folks with sickle cell, okay? Now, I'm gonna say this because I know that you understand where we are, okay? But I need to step one step further out here. So uh, you, you can see my screen, right, uh, uh, Ray? About the I can see it, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So notwithstanding that, right, we know that there are 4 million people in America with sickle cell trait, okay? We know that. Do we also know that about 3 million of them don't know they have it? We also know that 97% of all new babies with sickle cell disease have a parent or both parents who have no idea that they had sickle cell trait and could have a baby with sickle cell disease. We also know that every person in America is tested for sickle cell disease and trait. We also know that one of the number one causes of death in America from new military recruits is sickle cell trait. Not disease, but trait. We also know that about 16 young black men have died on the football fields in NCAA Division I sports due to sickle cell trait. We also know that if you as a black person go skiing in, a high, in, in, in high altitude, if you go hiking high altitude, then you could have a sickle cell attack and die, even if you don't have disease, but just trait. If you go in a alt high altitude in a, a non-pressurized helicopter, which they do in Vegas all the time, or a non-pressurized airplane, or if you're working out a lot and your bones start to hurt and you don't have sickle cell trait, you don't know you have sickle cell trait, you could just drop dead right there. This is criminal. It's criminal that we don't know as Americans that we have sickle cell trait or not. It's criminal. And the fact that the test is already done, all it is is a campaign to tell people go get tested or go get your results because you've already been tested. You don't even have to be tested. So that's what made me write this book because these things are not, it's not fair. Not that life is supposed to be fair, but come on, man, this is criminal, right? So, so much money is put into cystic fibrosis, which is a sister disease, quote unquote, um, to, to, to uh, sickle cell, but not a lot of money is put into sickle cell research. Not a lot of money is put into sickle cell anything. So we have to do something about it. And you see all these young black men all, all, on the football fields, basketball courts, all over, professional black men and professional black women wearing pink for breast cancer. Don't get me wrong, breast cancer is a very important deal, okay? But the only disease that's for black people that we need to deal with right now, only black people basically, unless you go out of this country, is sickle cell. So we need to have those professional athletes wearing our colors to bring the, 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 uh, the awareness to this disease, because this is what is going to cause a lot more problems in the United States and a lot of problems that we don't even know. And all it takes is a, an ad campaign and, 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 a, and a way that you can just go get your, your results from your state or from your doctor or from your hospital. So I'm going off on this, but I'm bringing it all back in a minute, okay? I just wanna thank you, obviously, Ray, for having me. And I know that this is a very powerful time for everyone. Black Lives Matter, folks. We also know all lives matter, but black lives matter and we have to do what we need to do. And as a medical broadcast journalist for NBC, CNN, Black News Channel, my job is to get Oprah Winfrey, President Obama, Mrs. President Obama, all these types of people to push this through. We can no longer sit. We can no longer sit. We've been sitting too long. All right. So I wrote this book called Sickle. And the reason why is because when you get diagnosed with sickle cell disease, you don't know where to go. When, you, when your mama finds out that you have sickle cell disease, you don't know what to do. She don't know what to do. Because she's like, I thought this was cured. Just ask black people around if you think that they think this, they think it's cured. Because they've had a couple of cures you hear it on the radio, you hear it on the TV. They've had a couple of cures. So there is a cure, okay? But by and large, people do not ha they have the ability to get that right now. So you got basically got to live with it. And what does that mean? That means you got to be in the hospital all the time, acute chest syndrome all the time. You ain't got your money's going everywhere. You're emotionally distressed. You're depressed. You don't know what to do. This book takes you through and chronicles that difficult journey after the diagnosis all the way through 
and gives you all the things you need to know. It's almost like a playbook, like a like a like a, 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 a owner's manual. And it also lets you just share some of the feelings that you have. So I think that you it's on Amazon. Please go get it. But uh, but notwithstanding that, we're going to move to talking about what we're talking about here. We're going to talk about inventory, right, folks? Now, now, let me tell you something. There's a lot of medicines out there for sickle cell, but really not many, not many just for sickle cell. And in the last 60 years, there's only been three or four. And so you got to think about stuff like wh wh why, you know, if I take these medicines, I've had a lot of side effects, blah, blah, blah. That's why I want to talk about Indari for you, because this is L-glutamine oral powder. Now, L-glutamine oral powder, you're like, wait a minute, glutamine, that sounds familiar. It does sound familiar because you already have glutamine, okay? You already have glutamine. So this is an amino acid. It's not a supplement. To be very clear. This is a medicine licensed for the, by the FDA to treat sickle cell disease. Working on trying to get it treat, to treat sickle cell trait too, because like I told you, people have a lot of problems with sickle cell trait and they have no idea that they're having these problems because they don't know how to have sickle cell trait, all right? It's for people uh, five years age of age and older. So what actually happens? You have a lot of sickle cell of, of stress, oxidative stress and sickle cell disease, okay? And so a lot of people don't understand. We know that you have your bones hurt. We know that you can't breathe sometimes. We know that uh, you have uh, muscle pain. We know all that. We know your kidney has a problem, but the reason why is because you have oxidative stress inside the cell. This is inside the cell. And what happens, you see that the little, um, the little uh, frowny face, you see that you have this stress. And then this stress causes the sickling. So when you have the sickling that causes, the stress causes sickling, then you get the red cell rupture that causes the jaundice, that causes the hyperbilirubinemia, right? All these things. And when you have that, that makes you have stress inside the blood vessel. And when you have stress inside the blood vessel, that's when you have the stress throughout the body. And that's the problem. And that's when you get cell wall damage. And when you have cell wall damage, that makes it so that you have all these other issues, okay? So how does Indari work? How does Indari work? Glutamine goes into the cell, goes oxidative to NADH, then the NADH is all through the blood cell, comes out and makes the blood cell more stable because it takes NADH to NAD. Now, that is something that a lot of you may not understand, okay? You don't need to understand it because the point is this is something brand new. The side effect profile is almost zero. You take it and you will start to feel better. And you got to take it for about a month or so so that you can know because all these things are happening inside the cell so that you can feel better. Now you say, okay, well, how much better? What does that mean? So we're gonna look at the antioxidant levels. They're already low in patients with hemoglobin SS as compared to those patients with hemoglobin AA, right? And so we did this study in Saudi Arabia. A lot of people don't know this, but there are more people in the Middle East with sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait than in the United States. Why? Because the Middle East is, is basically Africa. It's right, uh, right above, you know, Egypt. And in the Middle East, that's Egypt. All these things. Egypt is Africa. I know that people don't like us to say that. People don't like to talk about it. But Egypt is Africa. We invented everything. Remember that when you feel kind of like, oh, I, all I see on the news is Black people not doing well. Remember, without Black people, without Egypt, we had nothing. Okay? So, we, so just remember that, right? Feel strong in that, especially when your children tell you they don't understand math. Are they scared of math? We invented math. They don't like science. We invented science. Remember that. So if you look at the NAD here, you look at and you look at the, the redox potential in normal red blood cells, look at this at this antioxidant level in this redox potential here in normal red blood cells. But look at the sickle red blood cell. Okay. But Indari works by restoring that antioxidant NADH. And you look at the change in baseline when you take only four weeks of this powder at 30 grams in a day. You see the redox potential goes up from baseline in four weeks and all these things go up, which means that treatment with Indari normalize that NAD and redox potential. So this is what it looks like under the microscope. If you take Indari, and I'm going to tell you this again, it is not a supplement because it is an amino acid. Some doctors are like, oh, well, this is a supplement. No, this is a medicine that needs a prescription. It needs a prescription for you to take, and it's a powder. After 30 grams per day, look at the sickled red blood cells in this side, peripheral blood smear, okay? Look at the cells uh, 30, um, one, uh, 12 weeks later. Look at that. Huge difference. And what does that mean? well-rounded, less sticky red blood cells. And we're going to see what that means really for you. Okay, now this is what's going to really make you understand. 
25% fewer pain crisis, 33% fewer hospital admissions, 41% fewer cumulative days hospitalized, and a 63% lower incidence of acute chest syndrome. Now, if that don't make you wanna try this medicine with very low side effects, I don't know what will, because it's new and it's something that you really need to be looking at and asking your doctor. We wanna look at this study, okay? The inclusion criteria, you had five years of age, you need to have hemoglobin SS or sickle beta thal uh, zero. You had to have uh, greater than two documented VOCs in the prior year. Um, you had uh, hydroxyurea you could use, but you had to have on a steady dose and, and together, okay, with the with um, the indari and the transfusions were permitted during the study. If you couldn't have severe renal disease, severe kidney disease, you couldn't be pregnant, lactating, or have gotten blood products. The endpoints were the number of sickle cell crisis through week 48. Now think about that, number of sickle cell crisis. That's a big deal because you got to know that's what changes your life. That makes your organs kind of get messed up when you keep having these crises, but it also means that you're gonna be in a hospital for a long time. You're gonna be in the ER for a long time. You don't want that. And if that sickle cell crisis that we use, if you had a visit to a facility and got some uh, medicine for pain, if you had a splenic sequestration, you had a priapism or you had acute chest syndrome, all right? So we looked at that. Now, when people start saying, oh, we don't know about that. Oh, I don't know. Well, you know who does know about it? The New England Journal of Medicine published the study to show what Indari did because it was so impressive, okay? Phase three trial of L-glutamine and sickle cell disease. You looked at here, you looked at the hospitalization for sickle cell pain, you had the 25% fewer pain crises. And this was observed regardless of the hydroxyurea use. So you could be, have, be having the hydroxyurea on board or not. Think about that. Fewer pain crises, once again, this is uh, the FDA's analysis of data. This is, you know, the, when the FDA sit and goes through stuff, they go through with a fine tooth comb. So if you look at this, at any time during the study, patients on Indari had fewer pain crises than those on placebo. Point blank, period, the end. That is the case, all right? That is the case. Fewer hospitalizations, people with, uh, that were taken Indari, 33% fewer hospital admissions. Okay, 33%. That means more time to do with you, you being normal, being on, with your family, doing normal things. Shorter hospital stays, cumulative days hospitalized, 41% fewer cumulative days hospitalized, 41%. That means you, you're doing normal things, right? You're having fun, you're going around hang, and doing what you want to do, not being concerned about this disease that you have. And this is one. Acute chest syndrome is a big killer, big killer for patients with uh, sickle cell, big killer. 63%, 63%, think about that. That's amazing, all right? Now, also, this is interesting. Median time to first crisis was delayed by 30 days, which means your first sickle cell crisis in days, when you look at the cumulative event rate, you see in diary, and then you see the placebo, all right? Once again, that's very important. So when we look at all these the clinical benefits, we look at 25% fewer pain crisis, 33% fewer hospitalizations, 41% fewer days, 63% fewer patients and, uh, with acute chest syndrome, and 30-day delay in time to first crisis. The safety was tolerated well. The SAEs were slightly higher than the uh, placebo group. The AEs uh, leading to discontinuation were infrequent, and the safety profile was similar to the placebo. What does that mean? Placebo is sugar pill. The safety profile was similar to if you just took sugar pill. Essentially, it's an amino acid. It's an acid that you already have in your body, and we give you a, a form of it. And it's orally administered. It's for five years and up. You can take it with hydroxyurea, and it's for all genotypes. Once again, folks, this is uh, sponsored by Emmaus uh, Medical. And what I want you to understand is that your doctor needs to prescribe this medicine for you, okay? But there are a lot of things on the horizon that you're going to be seeing where you may be able to get this medicine through the, our website, okay? So that you don't have to go through a bunch of rigmarole trying to convince your doctor who may not know about Indari yet um, that you need it, all right? And one thing else I also wanna tell you is that we gotta put the power back in the patient's hands. We gotta put the power back in the patient's hands and everybody that's out there that's dealing with all this stuff, when you are at the dinner table, over Thanksgiving and Christmas, you need to ask everybody at that dinner table, what is your sickle cell status? If they don't know, we gotta fix that. There's nobody in America that's black that should not know their sickle cell status. Because at this point, it is changing the face of how we are dealing with each other as far as our health in America. You can't lose weight if you have sickle cell trait 
and then you can't go work out because you don't, you, you, your bones are hurting and you don't know why. You can't live your normal life. So what we have to do is take sickle cell off the back burner and put sickle cell on the front burner. And as a, as a, as a person that's in the media every day, I'm enlisting everybody to put this weight on their back and we have to change this paradigm because if this was a white disease, we wouldn't be doing, having to do all this. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm sick of talking about this in a way that is not worried about stepping on people's toes. I don't care about people's toes anymore. I got to make sure that my black people's toes and my sickle cell patient's toes don't get stepped on by, my, by, by, by not uh, letting people understand the seriousness of this disease and how it impacts us. You think about it, it's all cute when you're three years old and you're having a little pain crisis and everybody's in the children's hospital, you know, like, oh, we give them some medicine, blah, blah, blah. But it ain't cool no more when you're 21 years old and you're a big black man going to the ER asking for morphine. And the doctors have never heard of sickle cell disease needing morphine because they don't have a lot of doctors that have taken care of patients with this. And then you labeled as a drug seeker and that follows you all the way through your life. It ain't funny no more. So what I'm telling you is we gotta make this the real deal. We have to take it seriously. We have to get out and beat the streets. We got to get all these, uh, these celebrities and these football players and basketball players on this train because we got to make sure that all 4 million Black people in America have the ability to know if they have sickle cell trait or not, and we got to do something about it. So with that being said, um, you can go. Oh, and by, by the way, I want to tell Ray this. I didn't even tell you this, right? I'm going to be starting a, um, a, um, a uh, uh, I guess you could call it a, um, a show, a, a Facebook live show about two times a month. I'm going to invite somebody on who either is a key thought leader in sickle cell or a sickle cell patient, which I'm mostly going to do patients or the uh, folks that are on the C, uh, over the CBOs. And we're going to have a sickle cell chat and we're going to do it at least twice a month for about 15 to 20 minutes because people out there need to hear your story. And I have hundreds of thousands of Facebook followers and they need to hear your story. We're gonna keep it in their face until they can't do anything else except do what we need them to do. Step up, give us our research dollars, respect our disease, get us a national registry so we can know everybody that has sickle cell traits so they can go and get their information and do the things they need to do that they do for other things. So I'm out. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to unshare Okay. and that was a powerful presentation. Not only did you break down some of the causes of complications uh, and particularly pain complications in sickle cell disease, but then you also walked us through how uh, Indari impacts and improves the outlook for pain crises. And then you talked about the social ills that um, compound the, the, the complications of this disease. Um, and, and I like you, like I'm a straight shooter. I, I speak from the hip. This is not just your average conversation about a disease that's affecting a certain group of people. This is a disease that has implanted itself into a, 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 a group that has already been the victim of many social ills who has already suffered um, under, under oppression and, and, and varying levels of treatment that do not reflect um, uh, some of the most po popular and some of, of, of other groups in society. We know that, we recognize that, having as many options as we can on our way to the cure right? Treatment is not a cure. We recognize that. And while we increase the number of treatments, we also have to go all out as we, as we identify what is our cure. And not just a cure for some, but a cure for all, a universal cure. So I am, I'm so grateful for that. Um, we have a couple of questions that I think are very important and relevant. Um, and and um, even if you had covered it in your slides, let's go back over it again. First and foremost, how old do you have to be to use Indari? Yes, we want to be five years of age, five years of age and up. And so um, th that's because that's what the FDA has stipulated for it to be. We used, we did the clinical trials on uh, that age group and that's where we are. However, we are coming to a very interesting crossroads here where we want to be making this uh, available for patients lower in age. 
uh, because like I said, it is a, a powder with, which is an amino acid that you already have. The only reason why it's not down lower is because we didn't do the study. We haven't, we didn't release the data for the studies yet. So, but, it, but we hope that it's coming very soon. So that's, that's super exciting. One of the things I can, you know, say other than, you know, hydroxyurea is typically um, um, prescribed very early in, in, in years and typically under age one, at least that's sure. the goal, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then many of the other treatments that are available start at a, a, an age that is much higher. So you're already into adolescence or pre-adolescence. Sure. Um, and yet that's not the case for Indari. Indari means that you can begin giving it to your kids before they know to fight back first and foremost, right? Exactly. So at five years old, they know what you're giving them and they, they trust that and they start to take it more regularly. You can normalize it by in, in their meals mm. um, and in the, their drinks as you're giving them healthy drinks. And so, it's a powder. And it's, and a, it's, a, it's, powder. it's a powder. It's a powder. Yes. And, 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 and the taste, it doesn't taste gritty or funny. And once you start doing that in a very early age, then it, it is constantly making so that making sure that those antioxidant levels are high enough to keep that, 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 that cellular disruption from starting. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stop all this from getting to that point as, as natural as possible. And that's the thing, people, that's what people kept talking about. Like, well, if it's natural, why is it a medicine? because it's a proprietary uh, combination of the, the way that we make the, the L-glutamine. And, and that's why it is a mix. You literally just answered the next question because the next question was, how is using Indari different than using an L-glutamine supplement? I get that question all the time, whether yes. it's patients or whether it's other medical professionals and physicians, sure. particularly prescribing physicians. Like sure. we have to be able to distinguish that difference. And you just hit on that. Can you yeah. say more? Yes. Yeah, so basically, you know, th there is a, a, a special sauce, if you will, uh, to, to make this the, not just regular L-glutamine. However, it, it is proprietary and the way that it is shuttled inside the cell, that's what makes Indari just much more special than regular L-glutamine because the amount of L-glutamine that you'd have to take for it to be shuttled into a cell at that level, you couldn't take that much. So what we have done is be able to manipulate it so that it gets into the cell much easier and much quicker at a much higher concentration. Because if you want to do that with a regular supplement, it just would not shuttle that way. It wouldn't. So it's, it's, you, you couldn't do it. So that's why it, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, water's good. Water's good, right? But it, it, if, you, if you wanted to drink so much water to try to be hydrated as opposed to getting the IV, you, you kind of can't do that if you're sick. You see what I'm saying? So the way that you could think about it is like maybe an IV of glutamine in a way that you could never drink 15 gallons of water, but I can give you a, a liter worth of IV fluid to make you feel better than 15 right. gallons of water. Right, right. And, and, and that's so important to recognize is that it, it, it's, it's a matter of doing things the, the hard way <laughs> or the easier way, right? Yeah. And, and that's a lot of what I, what I hear you saying. And so- um, and, 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 just, yeah, and, and just as an aside, the reason why we know, and you can know as a consumer, as a patient, that it's a lot different because the FDA would never have, have, have licensed us as a medicine if it was just L-glutamine in the same way you could go get Absolutely. it as a supplement. Absolutely. And, you know, you also pointed out, you know, I, I am the mother um, and partner in care with my 25 year old son who has sickle cell disease. And here in Minnesota, you know, it, it is, it can be the tundra. It's pretty cold. And, and many people are like, how do, do warriors survive in Minnesota, right? In, with sickle cell disease, right? Number one, our bodies get a little bit more acclimated, no different than if you live sure. in some tropical areas. But yeah. it's also about no matter where you live, learning how to be proactive and preventative. The weather is shifting. We know that we need to make sure we are drinking the proper amount of fluids. We need to be taking our prescribed medications every single day as prescribed. We know that we need to be increasing our fruits and vegetables and leafy greens um, you know, to give our, our 
our immune system, um, some sort of stamina, an extra boost, um, all of those things. So I love what you said about when you're starting um, your child young on, on their various regiments and medications, what you are doing is, is arming their bodies to be able to prevent the crisis or to be able to lower the chances of, of, of not being able to fight it as well. And so that preventative nature, that preventative um, lens that we that we 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 live through is about helping us down the road. It's about our future. So what we do now, even if we can't see it, feel it, touch it, we know that it's impacting our tomorrow, and that makes it worthwhile. And and so I thank you for pointing those those very important things out to us. Um, another question that came through chat, it didn't come through the Q and A, uh, is um, so it's a double question. Can prolonged use of Indari cure sickle cell disease? And then what are the side effects, short term and or long term of using uh, a, a treatment like Indari? Okay, so the, the beauty of Indari, the first, what, first question was, um, can prolonged use cure sickle cell? We can never say that because curing sickle cell is a genetic disease. Because sickle cell is a genetic disease. So until you manipulate the genes or take out the cells with those genes and replace them with cells with genes that don't have sickle cell permanently, then there, it's not going to be a cure. So that's like kind of CRISPR therapy. And you can look that up, C-R-I-S-P-R. Um, so it's not a cure by any means, right? Um, now, the short-term side effects, when you take it theoretically, like with any medicine, some nausea, some vomiting, um, those types of things, but but nothing that is out, out of, of the realm of what you might have as a short-term side effect from any antibiotic or any other medicine. It's, but the side effect profile is very, very, very low. It was, it, in fact, it was so low, it was similar to placebo, which means the, the side effect profile that you get from taking Indari is very close to the side effect profile you get when you take a medicine that doesn't have any medicine in it at all, which is a placebo. And that's what we can say through the FDH studies, right? So, which is very good. Um, long-term use, long-term use, we don't see any long-term um, side effects of Indari. And we have to say that we've done several years worth of, uh, of study. Um, and so in, nothing that, that uh, it, it would stick out to be something that is ominous in any way, shape or form. Uh, we know a lot of the other medicines out there do have these very long-term side effects. And the beauty of Indari is that because it is an amino acid, you already have this amino acid. You already have it. So if there was a long-term side effect of having that naturally, then there'd be a long-term side effect of having us give it to you. But it's not. And that's why we think it's very important. That's why. And also, you know, back in the day, you know, you used to have to, you know, your doctor used to have to learn about this stuff. And then the doctor had to bring it to you. But now you see television commercials on about medicine. And then you go to the doctor and ask for the medicine. When you see this, I want you to go to your doctor and I want you to say, hey, what's up with Indari? And I want you to tell them to, if they don't know about it, they need to look it up and, and, and then call them about three days later because they need to know about it because we're trying to change the game here. We're trying to put the power back in the patient's hands and we're trying to make sure that everybody understands that you can do this in a way that prevent all this stuff because we know the problem with a sickle cell disease is the long-term end organ damage that are done is done by the sickle cell. It's not the sickle cells themselves don't kill you. The sickle cells themselves don't make the problem. The sickle cells cause a problem with the blood flow to the organ, which causes the problem. So if we can decrease the amount of sickle cells going to the organ, then we decrease the amount of opportunity for the organ to fail, spleen and everything else. So that's why we need to do this early, we need to do this often, and with the least side effect profile as possible. And most important, you prolong life, right? Exactly. And quality life. Because quality. I, I've had so many conversations about, um, you know, the, the, the quality of life versus quantity of life. Sure. We can continue to take medications that allow us to live longer, but if we are not impacting the quality of life as you live longer, 
um, we are we are not taking into consideration the impact, the totality of how this disease impacts individuals. And wow. so all of these different medications, you know, they all work in very different ways. Um, I want to make sure that I point out Indari was only the second, the second approved drug for sickle cell disease. It happened in 2017. Um, the previous one, uh, uh, hydroxyurea, was back in the early 80s. And, and that took a long time. And that wasn't even created with us in mind. Exactly. It, it, was, it was approved because of the Orphan Drug Act, which allowed us to, which allowed uh, providers to use a, a medication that was uh, created for one purpose, but they found out that it, it, it benefited another exactly. purpose, right? But now these medications that are being created in Dari and others are created with sickle cell in mind. The research was specific to sickle cell and the clinical trials are including individuals with sickle cell, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that's for us must be with us. And so I, I'm, I'm so uh, excited about this medication. Yes, it does work differently than hydroxyurea. And I want to clarify because um, the, 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 one of the things that I look for as a partner in my son's care is, does this medication work with um, or is it a replacement for hydroxyurea? None of these medications are replacements for one or the other, though each individual will re may respond differently to whatever their, 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 their drug therapies that they're on. Would that be fair to say? Yes, absolutely. And one thing we have to remember, n nothing is going to cure uh, everybody or make everybody feel better, okay? And so what you have to remember is that in our study, the, we use this medicine along with hydroxyurea in some patients, okay? So do, are some patients gonna do well on this as monotherapy, as just this? Absolutely. Are some patients doing very well in hydroxyurea? Absolutely. But there are some patients that are taking hydroxyurea that are not doing very well and are not getting the, a benefit from it. OK, yeah. so there's going to be so this is a hybrid. That's why the doctors have to really be integral in trying to make sure that they give the best regimen for the patient. It may be in diary alone. It might be hydroxyurea alone. It may be them in concert. But one thing I will always say, and I've been practicing medicine for 25 years. And as a black doctor, you know what that means, right? That means that I had to jump higher, run faster and to, to do it, to test the same test as my white counterparts, right? So when the black people sometimes get, don't, don't want a black doctor, like, oh, I want a white doctor. I was like, what do you do at your job? When the, at your job, do white people move up through the ranks faster and quicker without as many credentials? Yes, that's the same way as medicine, right? So you better find your black doctor. But anyway, point is, um, yes, you, you, you have to remember, you gotta remember that when we start talking about all these medicines and how they're going to work for you, you gotta look at, which medicine were designed just for sickle cell patients. Okay, just like she said, the hydroxyurea actually was, I mean, I hate to be this way, but like Viagra. Viagra wasn't made for erectile dysfunction. Viagra was made for hypertension and they noticed what happened, right. okay? <laughs> you know, uh, minoxidil that you used to, to make your hair grow right? Uh, Rogaine, that wasn't yeah. made to make your hair grow. That was made for something else. They noticed that people's hair was growing, right? That's what hydroxyurea is. And not to take anything from that, but I'm just saying it wasn't made for that. It wasn't made for sickle cell patients. So it's not, it's not, not one thing is going to fit everybody, but you have to remember that we are fighting this good fight as black folks. And we have to keep it in that level that we are fighting for you. This is awesome, and and I, I'll end, um, you know, on the note that how we get to new medications is not just because a doctor presents it to us as this new therapy. Sometimes, and 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 especially for us as Black patients, it's because we walk in already informed. Yes. And then we bring it up to our doctor, and we say, "Hey, what about?" I'd like to try. Let's explore this because far too often, and I see this not just in my own son's care, but in other friends and family member, 
that a doctor does not bring up any other alternatives or options. They oftentimes go with what they've been using the longest, what they know the best. Um, they may not be as aware of what's newer. Um, and so when we are informed, we are empowered. And right. we have to exercise that empowerment in order to not just receive the improved care, but demand improved care. And Absolutely. we do that from knowledge. And so right. what you shared with us today was all kinds of snaps of knowledge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so okay. I appreciate that. I love these types of sessions. To, for me, it's all about empowering our community with right. information and options so that we can make informed decisions, not emotional decisions, and certainly not decisions only out of pain. We have to make informed decisions. So I'm excited about your book. I can't, I, I, I can't even wait to click the button so I can <laughs> order, and not just one for myself, but one to also to gift to his doctor because right. I want them to see and understand the humanity of our community through the lens of a colleague that 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 has studied just as much if not harder because like you said we're gonna run run faster jump higher That's and right. all of those pieces but it, it is it, it it is a known fact that um colleagues hear colleagues through a different ear uh, and so we appreciate you being in a position of privilege and honor. And we are so grateful that you are um, elevating your voice in those environments. And you're speaking truth to power uh, in me on many different layers and levels. So we are so grateful to have you here. What an honor that it is. I thank you so very much. I want to remind people once again that an we're going to try to do this shared screen again, um, live and all, but reminding you all that we have continued sessions of Living Sickle Smart and that um, in 2021, we still have remaining our November session and our December sessions. You can access it through our website, but I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and follow, subscribe to us and watch all the videos you'd like. And then you can also subscribe to our Eventbrite channel uh, in order to stay abreast of what we have coming up. Um, as I said, please uh, Google Hertz Nazaire, that's N-A-Z. A-I-R-E, N-A-Z-A-I-R-E. Go to YouTube. Um, he has some amazing videos. Go to his Instagram and, and Twitter accounts. Um, this man was phenomenal on so many levels. So not only did he fight sickle cell disease, we know he was very public about the fact that he lost his mother at a very early age and that, um, you know, it was a struggle living alone with sickle cell disease and finding ways to cope um, in a healthy way. And he found painting, he found artistry, he found something from within to help get him through this horrible disease. And, um, to say that it's a loss is an understatement. He was my friend. And so um, I'm going to honor him in every way possible. And I ask that you honor him as well. So thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you next time with our Living Sickle Smart. Take care of yourselves and be blessed.